share a brick bot and okay thanks but I'll take it from here. Hello, it's the Korean American with a couple of bricks and a bunch of bots. Transformers. They're a cool thing and more than meets the eye. So much more. But say Pyeonshin robot to any Korean kid age 3 to 7, and this, or maybe this, but definitely not this, will be the first thing that will come to their little minds. Can you believe it's been 7 years since a factory of a toy company overtook not one, but two franchises once thought to be the epitome of transforming robots? For Korean kids? They've dominated not just the toy shelves, but they're also in movies and musicals on shirts, hats, shoes, books, stickers, puzzles, lunch boxes, lucky boxes, underwear, Tupperware, snacks, cereals, vegetables and animals and minerals, and even seaweed. And it all started with this guy. And to think they called you a knockoff. I bet the Western minority that just so happened to stumble across this thing was like, oh, hello. Whether it was Hello Carbot Transformer Robot Toy on the Bay or Tobot Hello Carbot Transformer Toy Color Play Kid Baby Thing on the Tube, this just looks like a cool thing, but little more than that. With no fiction attached to him that you would know about, and any kid's interest is really going to be purely in him as an object. This rather splendid car thing, which he, he tells me is from a show called Hello Carbot in Korea? No idea. So how about we actually acquaint ourselves with the advent of Autonaut Ace and his apex and attrition. Ace Avengers Assemble! That was awfully asinine. So Hello Carbot rolled out in November of 2013. Except they were Daya cloning as the very first release toys were literally just Hyundai automobiles in the shape of robots. Santa Fe and RWB and Rescue, Granger B and Granger R, and Avante Y. They even Cabot Santa Fe. Cabot Santa Fe? And before Punch wrapped the Carbot Techno theme tune, this father and son parodied Narazo Superman. It wasn't until the post-pilot proper premiere of August 2nd, 2014 that they would be given proper names. Just as Vanette was iron hided Kuntak was Sunstreakered, and Fair Lady was Blue Streaked. So the pilot initially went with the trope that the dad of a family of three bought a new car that turned out to be a giant robot. But season one proper rewrote it into the secret friend just being a rental. Oh! I guess it would get old quick to have the pet detective Ace Ventura appear in every single episode of every single season. Righty then. So the actual story of origin is this kid's grandpa sent him a cube from Antarctica and this Rubik's Cube just magically summons secret robot friends whenever he wants at the flick of a turn or a flick of a watch. So did the grandpap discover an arc full of sentient robots with colorful personalities and not scientifically possible abilities? And did he really decide the best course of action and responsibility for this great power was to give it all to his grandson for personal, non-profit, humanitarian use? Well, they're never going to tell you. It's a secret. Yep, almost forgot to touch upon the source of origin that is neither Hasbro or Takara. So to any Transformers fan foreigner, Donald Kong is best known as the alternative go-to for Takara's brave and Transformers intact in the late 90s. Sonokong Kong was founded in 1974 as an industry of faucets until 1986 when CEO Choi Shin Yu started producing toys as Soul Chemical then made a journey to a name change 10 years later. And one could assume the Monkey King learned to conjure up their own car bots after years of importing not their handiwork. Well, it's kind of true, except it was Toy Rock Contents Factory all along. He stepped down as CEO and booted up Toy Rock Contents Factory in 2007 as a family-owned game and animation corporation. 
I generally see Sano Kong as a distributor and platform partnering with other international companies as a local name brand. I guess years of behind the scenes stuff finally paid off with their first two smash hits. Okay, now on to the show. So the basics on Ace is he's the embodiment of loyalty, the man among men. But apart from that, he's your pretty typical roguelike. With an intense rivalry with Granger, Hawk, throwing japes and jeers and jabs at each other in the few times they were on screen together. Just why? Is it like a first place, second place dynamic? Is Hawk secretly jealous of Ace for his maybe a slightly higher claim to fame than he is? He may be a Santa Fe, but it was probably too much on the nose to have a walking Hyundai sponsor on the telly, so the W Baba animators tweaked it just so so that it would look like this, or nothing, then this, then this early installment weirdly cubic badge worn by the hardly Hyundai homies. And it's a good thing the boy got some tweaks. His early designs were a little bit lifeless or uncanny. And this boy, this chat hand, this mainstay of the entire series, he's just like their pretty much typical run-of-the-mill, self-projectable kid protagonist who will always forever be in the first grade. Anyway, this man among men is certainly looking masculine with his impeccable auto pecs. Legs are looking positively prismatic and polygonical, with multiple vertices and facets extending to his hexagonal hook knees and zebra thighs. Mecha muscles mounted on mechanical milky polyoxymethylene parts for riveting and resounding ratchets. Thrown to this stodgy speedo adding to the low poly count. The arms are interesting enough with semi-shifted panels and all four wheels right on there, but they're all death and no width. <laughs> they're only bulked up by his car panels, the show doors dangling in grooves that don't slide or lock in all the way. And the most significant shortcoming of KTRTs is their general lack of arm side-to-side -side bicep swivels. They just don't have them. Did the production budget go into everything else? Or would having these unnecessary joints just confuse the little kitties? And um, about that abnormal android noggin. It's uncannily humanly round and white like a mannequin with a flat top black top hairdo, a vicious Ultraman Ace V-Brow complete with Ruby for forehead piping and rocking some ace copular triangular angry eye shade eyes, fry angry, a strange scowl and funny frown pointing upward to sunken in cheekbones directly right on the face, not exactly the friendliest looking face, or the most transformery looking face. I guess the curves of his cranium complement the curves of the car he's contracted to. Or maybe it's abstract for a utilitarian automobile to have such a anime super robot head. Whether you like it or like it less so, it is certainly his look and his look alone. Or maybe it's designed like that because it just translates so well into a badge, a branding mark, a faction. No wonder Hawk's so jealous. And Ace's lone accessory is this machine gun with all sorts of mechanical detailing and an upside down magazine? It's certainly not a Galil ACE, and it straight up doesn't exist in the show, because you can't have the heroes pointing guns at people. Also, 5mm parts. I imagine most kids won't notice or won't care, but it's great to have this system of cross-compatibility, even though they have tabs specifically matched for each of their intended toys. Also, what's with his name? Ace. That's such a atypical name for a robot. Though I suppose Ace is ambiguous enough to be used for anyone, like be it people, robots, or dogs. And is he a pro? Does he excel at aerial acrobatics? Kind of? 
He may not have amazing attacks like Portica's the Ace Flaming Fists of Fury, but he can throw his tires. Which, surprise, the actual toy can't do. I guess that could be a universal play feature for all those modern cheap out clip on play wheels. But would you rather have frictionless fun or poppable plastic tires that would result in carjacked aftermarket junkers? The transformation delivers on their slogan on just about every single one of their boxes. Simple transformation. Perfect interlocking parts made with domestic technology. As seen on TV, 3D animation. The most advanced action to Ace is making sure the neck flap doesn't get snagged as his head fills in his gastro gap. And breaking his knees to align all the tabs that slot in snug as a plug. And the machine gun sandwiches right between the legs for super secure seamless storage. That thing's not going to slip out or slap on. This officially licensed 122 scale Hyundai third generation Santa Fe advertising a four wheel drive and an electrical variable geometry turbocharger and a 2.2 CDRI in the brochure is certainly a beaut. Also, bonus opening trunk shaped heels. Or Rocket Boots Booster Boot. This New Mexican namesake lending itself to a sense of outdoor adventure accommodates Ace as the strong and powerful de facto leader. And it's a licensed transformer with a balance between form and function. It's not trying to be a interior decorated model car with robot bits on it or an alien life form with car bits in it. Just a straightforward, clean cut, clutter and kibble clean car robot. And these are real robots in disguise. Or secret friends as HC sells it. Honestly, most of the car Autobots were more dazzling and dashing than disguised with their loud Lambos and rambunctious racers. And admit it, if you've been at the wheel and saw some flashy Fords or certain Chevys pass by, you'll be like, but this main cast are civilian cars by the dozen. Your mom's got one of these. Also, great job disguising their colorful secondaries that are really concealed until they expose themselves. You hardly see that in Transformers. The colors you see in the vehicle are the colors you get in the bot. With grayscale accents. So everyone who grew up in the Hanguk Robot heyday can't help but to glance at every Kia and Hyundai and maybe the occasional Sanyong and imagine just how they could interact as robots IRL. Oh yeah, Kia. Kia and Tobot. The young toys that led to a Korean toy renaissance. That was kind of curtailed by its competitor in terms of consumership. Yes, Tobot had a four-year head start, a superb serialized story surpassing expectations, a global outreach, but their toys leave a lot to be desired. They were more cutesy Kias and passable facsimiles rather than true proportionate scale models. They had a really rough start with the wrong kinds of rickety ratchets. And to this day, they're more like Megazords with a couple more joints or old Unicron trilogy years than modern Articulaction Transformers. In that regard, Tobot and Carbot kinda have a complicated coexistence, kind of under its wing, but not exactly. So in short, Tobot's got the better fiction, but Carbot's got the better toys. Now, to address the other elephant in the room, this is an auto bigum that just doesn't really fit in any conventional big boy collection. Maybe the three to four inch action figures? But I guess they're joyfully big to be comfortably cuddled by the kitties. Or all strikingly awesome to construct a combiner almost as tall as a toddler. And its price of admission is justified with its high parts count allowing the luxury of transparent lights. But shame the smoky black gang molded front ones blend right in. And the likeness of a new car luster is reflected in this acrylonitrile butadine styrene sheen. Which has brought out scrutinous levels of collector's OCD in me. 
It's super shiny, but get closer and it's super scuffable. Lego is made of the same stuff, but even collectors don't bag every single piece. But this is like handling a giant Lego brick with super broad, smooth, studless surfaces. And it partially pains me when I see the intended consumers slosh and smash them around like Lego bricks in a bargain bin, when they could be proudly displayed and posed in a collection. What I'm saying is, scratches on ABS are inevitable. Just like automobiles. I'm just trying to keep mine from getting really unnecessary ones. Also like automobiles. Now then, I wouldn't be trying to pull off this poor man's parody if I didn't have a plethora of variant products to present. So first order of business, let's roll to the rescue! Aces also got a mission in the Volunteer Firefighter Department. Taking the form of a robot that's a Santa Fe Rescue Squad car that doesn't actually exist, in those colors anyway, Santa Fe Ace Rescues ready to respond rapidly and fight fires in the thick of the flames. He trades his blue for safety yellow and his bottom black trade for white wraparounds, except when he still has it. The conveniently American inverted Korean emergency hotline is blazoned alongside fire and rescue. The sparrowhawk of the NFA adorns the head hiding hood hunk. And check out that soft focus, heroic, and hardy head sculpt with baby blue visor. Yes, I know it's jarring to have an entirely new head because Transformers fans have always been accustomed to same body, new head equals new character. But this isn't Transformers. Just imagine this is Ace's heavy-duty, anatomically impossible slip-on firefighting helmet. He switched out his assault arms for an anomaly of an apparatus called a KRB gun? Krebs Ringer Buffer? Kinetic Ring Blaster? Korean Rescue Babama Thing? They say it's a building scaling or mountain climbing tool? Is this actually a blunt blade? But it looks more like a handle to hold on to. But the main addition of attraction is this water cannon! That the animators somehow screwed up in good G1 fashion. With lights and sounds brandished with a brilliantly blatant branded binary button. Sure to enthrall the I want to be a stock firefighter when I grow up kid. Clicks into a pre-existing tab, but has nowhere to go in car mode, also in G1 fashion. Not that you would want to. It looks like a pure old pump from a kid's water park that was plucked then plonked onto a realistic random robo. Also, the dreaded sticker sheet! I should also mention Ace Rescue's double duty as the titular Pentastorm's car boot. Kinda funny that the lead character turns into a shoe size 4600. Sure, it may be cheatsy set switching, but this is the only ace with collective chrome and crystal clear headlights. Okay, now that we're done with this dispatch, let's dial back to the Diacloning derivatives. Let's pay a visit to Ace R. Riker's often overlooked non canon cousins, Ace B. Armbruster and Ace W. Williams. Now, there's an actual difference between Santa Fe, a robot, and Ace the Santa Fe. This little windshield connector piece is now shorter and the windscreen shaft longer to match. Was this a fragile and breakable design? Well, I had one last chance to get MISB Santa Fe's B's and W's. Not the Ace W's, the very first original pre-Carbot 2013 ones. But I passed him up for squeaks. Squeaks. I still punch myself sometimes for making that stupid choice. So I had to resort to the land of the jungle. A plenty with child cared carbots. And by child cared, I mean scratched, scraped, abraded, rubbed, sunbathed, and frictioned with foreign substances. Whatever, at least I got them shiny new parts.
I love Sato Kong and Toy Rocks ANS. You can order just about any part from any year as long as they're in stock. As long as you can make a phone call in Korean. I guess that means you could arm an entire army with BFGs for just 2,000 won a pop. Imagine if Hasbro could let you order just the tiniest of primes or some missing flywheel instead of calling on hold for a whole nother figure of equal monetary value. Anyway, on to these two. Santa Fe Ace W, or Waste, is basically Ace in a dapper, clean and luxurious white suit. Red to white, blue to red, yellow to red, just on the sides of the feet. Ace B, or Blaze, on the other hand, is a totally different Coolio character with a brazen blue brow and baby blues, yellow yaps, a smattering of white shoulders and columns and accented midriff, and a palette inverse of the wigs. Alternate costumes or individual entities, take your pick. Just like an auto show, it's a common transport car robot toy that exists just for the sake of being toys, to be thrown out in multiple colors and flavors for more eye candy. And if by chance new life is breathed into one, the others are left behind and sidelined as a footnote. Part of that early installment weirdness real long time fans remember, but unknown to the newer generations. But not before going bite-sized. So what do you do when you're kicking off with a hot new toy in a hot new show? Make smaller, affordable versions, of course. These 134 scaled, slim, and impactful aces in red, white, and blue in blue, green, and red packaging briefly came to the shelves to be disposed by disposable income. These are delightful downscale deluxes whose 80% undercarriage legroom let them unfurl into winter height. And their tinier hands are perfectly 32mm for open-ended Lego light stick interlocking. The plastics no cheap chum, but they do exhibit budgeting conventions. Stumpy one-piece rear view mirrors, opaque windows, ratchets to ball joints and swivels, which are seriously susceptible to slipping, and poppable plastic pivots. <coughs> but no harrowing hollow bits. Hooray! But for 20 bucks back in the day, they are surprisingly well painted. But they look the most budgetly miserly in their gang-molded monochrome, so you have a seething red-hot raging ace. Race? Waste whitewash. White waste wash. And Blaze's got the belligerent blues and blubbering bloodshot red. At least he gets a blue sheen gun. But a quick part swap between red and white can fix the fix for show accuracy. Just be careful with the hips. Now what to do with the white ace red in the face? Well, I turned him into a Decepticon. Just to break the 100 to 0 good to bad cardbot ratio. Say hello to my Transformers OC Crackerjack. Or Crackjack, because Ace equals Crackerjack. In my head canon, Crackjack is a weapons specialist whose spark was sealed away and then placed in a clone body courtesy of Shockwave. And Blaze? Um, I don't know, swap the head and make him a sexier skin. Surely there's gotta be more smaller, affordable, universally scaled STD toys of these characters, right? Um, no, I think Sonokong just secret out one mold and called it a day. Real shame they just stopped with Ace and didn't do at least an STD rescue or his rival in STD. Very ironic that the standard is actually leader class big boxes. The STD title is just the last remnant, a callback of Sonokong's early days of STD in Takara Brave Toys. White plastic trays and all. These are made in Korea, so it was likely a one-and-done thing seeing what they could make without China and Vietnam. I'm sure many collectors would love to get a hold of these. It was a familiar entry point for a young Transformers fan like me into the strange new world of giant car Transformers. Leader class cars? Who wants that? A blue screen bot that's not show accurate at all? Who wants that? <laughs> Well, 2014 me didn't, but 2019 me did. But I can only assume most of them ended up in unappreciating hands, in bits and pieces in the bottom of the toy boxes or thrift store boxes or maybe garbage bags. 
And now they're absolutely the rarest Hello Carbot toys to date. So it's clear STD was just not their standard. So he went with a smaller small standard. Any toy line with cars gotta have micro contenders at some point, so of course they put out the Hyundai Carbots in pocket size. In minimalistic micro machine munchable matchboxes with manual. You know how deluxe car formers attempt to replicate transparent windows into robo junk by painting over large slabs of transparent plastic which clashes horribly? Well, these do that, but it's all over, so there's nothing to clash with. Except the varying degrees of black that will dip QC. And drawing attention to this adorable little micro ace. Ace adorable. It's not that great. He loses all his colorful secondaries in this candy kit white. His tum tums put on some weight. And his arms are cardboard cutouts. His shoulders are exactly as long as. Where are his arms? Where are his hands? They just could not figure out how to work those foldy outy bits into 158 scale. Um, I guess he can actually tire attack? And of course, they rolled out the Micro Ace Rescue recast in red plastic, which is arguably more better looking and durable than this commendable acryler but just <laughs> won't survive the toy box. And of course, of course, they released him again in a few years as Hello Carbot Minis. With playset, but Minnie's not a synonym for micro. This time it's all red, but a little too red. And what's with the half-assed back-only black bumper? Geez, either do it all or don't do it at all. Wait a minute, is that even a Santa Fe? Is that a for Santa simile? Is Toy Rock ripping themselves off? Well. Despite Ace not actually appearing on the new telly for a while, the acclaimed Santa Fe Ace enjoyed a good evergreen shelf life. Which is almost unheard of since most other toys of his likeness only have the staying power of a year or two. Not so much for his sponsored chassis. It would appear their 5 year licensing deal with Hyundai expired and instead of renewing it, or killing them outright, the toys, not the characters. They squeaked out one last Hyundai run before remolding and reprinting their flagship bots with their own forged branding just two months thin, denying the existence of their real world inspirations. And their badges of authenticity on the rear became a thing of the past. And so did brute breakage of said badges. I guess it's not viable to pay royalties for just 10 toys or 18 characters amongst an ever expanding catalog. Or would it be stuck in the past selling the same old Santa Fe's and Hyundai's when they now look like this? I guess the whole licensing thing was to get a startup of a company off the ground tied to the top automotive manufacturer of Korea. And I guess it got parents on board since they can relate their rides to their child replica playthings. But now that Toy Rock has thoroughly established itself, all the kids really care to know that this is a Baikan DT Bang Bang. So this is the journey of Ace and how he evolved from the car that turns into a robot, a character that turns into the car, and the character that turns into a car. And it's like they wanted their contract to conclude so they could start ground bridging to other Asian areas like Taiwan and China. So ni hao about we take a look at Kao Bao Cheshen. Gosh, what's with the literally translated car god? Now, HCKOs are far and few between. I mean, Tobots had a troop of Jack Tooms and Jani Tans, almost always those super simple mini chibi ones. But you won't see a 10 buck Anyang Chabot sitting in some off the wall Boombangu waiting to ruin a kid's day by shattering in their hands. Guess Toy Rock has a pretty tight grip on their patent. Except for Mechard. But of course, the land of the rising sun assimilated them into their countless counterfeit catalog. Well before the real deals launched there, go figure. And there were rogue remorseless reproductions and replicas by the... Double? 
Only two deformation delinquents dared to dubiously duplicate these engineering designs. Guess they were determined to double down on direct duplication with their chunky size and really round ratchets and all. Except for, you know, with very chinglish names like Thunder Spearhead, Car Hero, and his mates Thunder Duke and Meteor Wielder. But then these showed up in the Saratoy store in 2020. Voyager Carbots? So I picked them right up, they came in about two weeks time, and um, sorry to be a beat down downer, but these aren't knockoffs. Yes indeed, Toy Rock's Chinese chums, Channel Entire, and Mr. McWu are churning out made in China in-house Carbots, and an original subline of Hello Carbot Elites? Oh, they're onto them. So while these aren't cheap knockoffs, they definitely fit the bill. The plastic's absolutely ABS, but they went yellow bellied on the yellow paint. The actual belly's black with only a straight smattering stripe. More black's been weirdly bumped from the sides to the upper arms. The eyes look like they're popping out. At least the reversed ball joint gives it more wiggle room. The elbows on pins and stopper to a 45. The only remaining ratchets are in his thickened sides, and they've been neutered. Oh no. And his rosier rescue repaints looking a bit cheaper. Bare bone shin bones, an electronic gutted, electronic gutted water cannon that just looks like an indeterminable doohickey without the stickers. So pretty much the only thing these China cheapo exclusives have going for them is that they fit in the general Transformers masterpiece scale. And at a fraction of the cost. But to be a true a masterpiece ace, he would have to have all the things from the gold standard that is the cartoon. But who would want a complicated collectible of a kid's toy? I mean, come on. But who knows, now that they're kind of picking up steam, they might get the infringement party improvement magic. Also, a quick shout out to the official Carbot block set from the Shady Shang Huang that, just like Creo, is novelty merch because it doesn't do much for collectors because it doesn't transform. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the home turf, Toy Rock's further distancing Ace and his mates from their heritage and roots, yet keeping their visual identity intact with a 2020 facelift. It's as if a simple logo swap isn't enough to keep former license holders from knocking on their door. Take it from Hasbro. And Toy Rock's going green with completely cardboard containers inside and out, which is great for compact disposal or compact storage without any plastic pet peeves. But on the other hand, it doesn't let you take a sneak peek in the shops on which one of three has the best factory applied paint. So his royalty free tune ups are as follows. The wheel spokes are round as aces of clubs, arced by overcompensating mud guards, an angled bump here, an angled bump there, subtly shortened side turn signals, and apparently he doesn't need fuel anymore. Smoothed out surfaces for straightaway scuffing, a wireframe circuit board grill of the future, blotched in black that looks like beaters betwixt pearly silvers when it shouldn't. Busier headlights with intentional hangnails, and no raised license plate, just so they can slap hazardly put on the HC signature unconfined, and his work suit went through the rework wash as well. Oh hey, a diluted license plate. A bit unfortunate he was forced to be fitted with fluff, but if that's what had to be done to keep him on the shelves, well then so be it. You know with these mega compilation reviews, you would expect to see multiple iterations of your favorite character? Well, um, Ace doesn't quite have that aspect. We've been basically looking at the exact same thing in different colors and different sizes. At this point, maybe some were saying, Oh, if they're just gonna release the same old thing again, why don't they just make a completely new toy? Well, I am in the camp that says you can't improve upon perfection. <coughs> My sense levels. This design embodies the car robot. That iconic, tried and true classic should be a mainstay amongst the inundation of additions that some do have, but just aren't as cool and curvaceous as this mascot with modern sensibilities. 
if they were to ever absolutely rework Ace from the ground up, they better have a good reason to. After eight whole seasons of loads and loads of Noibots, Toy Rock finally plays their nostalgia card, declaring a Titan's return of Pentastorm X, giving the first Carbots a complete Axification makeover. Right after they just gave them a slight makeover? What? When the teaser was teasing, I was like, is that Ace? But since this just dropped in, I was like, Oh, they're still sticking to his evergreen design. That must be a completely new bloke continuing the title of Pentastorm. But then the confirmations happened and I was like, That is Ace? Yes, it's definitely him. He's doing that very first episode callback thing. Uh, just don't bring it up to Hawk. He's probably still sour he stole his spotlight. But in the looks department, I'm not sure if it's much of an upgrade. I mean, he went from an awesome auto bodybuilder to a scrawny, sacky short stack. And I do mean short, and I do mean sacky. Look, upgrades and updates are fine, as long as you can still recognize it's your guy in a new getup. And nothing says that more than the head. Even if it's not the same, it absolutely helps to have recognizable traits across all their iterations. And it kind of shows? But due to the duty of literally bearing the weight of an all 3 of one combiner on his back, he's looking less like a robot made of car, and more like a boring old robo with wheels and laser baggies. At least they augmented his articulation, ankle tilts, Waist swivel, and lower bicep swivels? But seriously, what good are lower bicep swivels? And at least his all-purpose self-contained fire truck mode bears a faint resemblance to an SUV? And it has storage for his humble little hose in both modes? You know, KTRTs have been running with copolymers so long, I've just kind of gotten used to it. There's some creative liberties and a sense of alien wonder seeing a robot turn into a car and then completely morph into a totally cohesive limb or appendage without any loose ends. Traditional car limb bots are still valid. You just need a minimum of one without getting multiple of the same toy. But they have to conform to uniform size and twinsy body types and dangling bits. And in this case, a front dance guy's been permanently drafted into the Axe Emergency Services 24-7. Maybe I'm being too hard. It was inevitable until the first of the first and popular mainstays of any toy franchise got refreshes as a sales and business booster. Kids always love seeing their faves changing, and other guys did it first sometimes twice, with narrative purpose. But the act scene just showed up one day feeling different with zero explanation. Talk about toy commercials disguised as entertainment. Anyway, it's not like they're completely phasing out their classic chassis. Classy, for now anyway. And I suppose you could imagine they could just trans-tessellate or trans into their old bodies on their day off if they need the legroom again. So seeing as Toy Rock went all the way from this to this and all sorts of crazy concoctions in between, what is Toy Rock's vision? It's certainly very different from the American ideal play pattern of action and fighting against the forces of evil. This is wholesome robot joy and fun experiences for children for a new generation of freshly born families. You know, I think Hashtag could learn a thing or two from these car two bots. They've totally trumped the tired old Transformers because of just how mass appeal it is. The toys are fun, big, and sturdy. The cartoon is Squid Gym, easy to jump right into any season on any channel or webpage on any week. Take that, you triannual Transformer reboots on cable and hiatuses. HC's kind of like the old G1 cartoon with its witty banter and one-liners and nonsensical adventures beyond imagination without any of the big boy nitty-gritty stuff and shock value. 
and serious stakes. The car bots wait their powers to rebel the annoying news and the, the light and stuff is on their Optimus Prime is a heroic father figure, but he can't be your friend. Bumblebee could be your friend, but he has pesky obligations like being the scout and the duty to protect not just you. And some parents are going to be hesitant getting their kids an evil character, especially if they look even eviler. But these guys? They're always here to help you with your small and sympathetic problems at the turn of the wristwatch. Until you grow up and eventually kinda forget about them and then ditch them for new toys, I mean more secret friends. As secret as giant eggs and UFOs can be. But it's all naturally because these Transformers are unabashedly marketed for kids, made for kids, and no one but the kids. If they looked exactly like their tone, I wouldn't bat an eye and just continue to complain about just how there's no Transformers to be found on any Korean shows here. Or I still could be collecting Lego. But since these do look like Transformers and effectively replaced Transformers, I couldn't help but to collect just about every single one of them I could. And review them like an American Transformers fan in case someone needs a nerd explanation of these curios instead of just glancing at cursory unboxings, always assuming you're a kid. But you probably have little idea on what kid's cartoon I'm blabbering on about since it's only in three languages right now. So that's where Young Toys is better. Cobot made it to the West primarily as a fun show for kids, without having too much reliance on their limited distribution of their toe toys. Even if the OG series Korean to the core was butchered and whitewashed to be as safe and non-Korean as possible by order of the not-so-wild-brained executives. However, unlike YT, Choi Rock seems perfectly content to keep their content on their side of the globe. Reissuing their roster at a ridiculous rate like nobody's business. It would be nice if the rest of the world could get in on the surplus. But hypothetically, culturally, economically speaking, unless Toy Rock can rival the prices of Cyberverse, directly importing these bigos to the West could be a clearance catastrophe. $50? Why would I make that much for a little kid when I can get the exact same thing, same size, for just 10 Especially since they already had a half-hearted Mattel and Mechard mismanaged minimal marketing misventure. I found this bag of old donuts. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. Can Mattel really stand up to the scrutiny of selling knockoff Transformers, not of their making, amongst their iconic Barbies, Hot Wheels, and He-Men? And I guess they chose Mechard over Carbot because those are smaller action figure card game toys. Big boy toys and car bots are like little boy toys. Toy Rock, start thinking small or I'm going to start my own company. With bicep swivels. And commitment to scale. Regardless, Toy Rock will continue to mass produce content with no shortage of fresh new faces as long as the babies keep booming. I mean, look at Pororo. But will there ever be a day where Korean toys can contend with the pop culture collector's industry? Dare they risk investing in complex and intricate re-engineered baby toys for man hands? Can a beloved series cut short build enough fan demand to get the band back together and continue, conclude, resurface, and reinvigorate interest from grown-up fans? Kukasin, Kimi. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to all you subscribers on the Home and Away team to tune in to a popular niche spoken in the most widespread language. Or at least look at it. The real YouTuber 1000 mark by December? It's a Christmas miracle. 
And yeah, it's been a tumultuous year since we've all been dragged down the chain reaction train. But hopefully we can recover should circumstances permit. Feel free to like if you admired this effort or not if it was awkward. And I said adios to Korea for now, cause academic adventures await in America. Oh, <laughs>